welcome to 90% Native. My name is Michelle and I garden in Northern Virginia. Today I'm going to be talking about my native plant wildlife hedgerow that I have on the side of the yard. I'll go over the plants that are already in there. I'll talk in detail about the plants that I'm going to be adding today and then stick around for the end where I will do a tour of the hedgerow. On the southwest side of my yard, I have a wild area. That wild area has been full of English ivy, vinca, stilt grass, all the non-native invasive plants that you can imagine. And over the past few years, I have been removing those invasives. Starting last year, I focused on creating a wildlife habitat with native plants in the form of a hedgerow and it is a fantastic place for birds to nest, for food sources for the birds, food sources for the butterflies and the bees and the small mammals. And that area of my yard is just perfect for it because there's no grass there. Already over there naturally, I have a tulip tree, I think two or three wild cherries or black cherries, maple leaf viburnum, tons of Virginia creeper, and one of my favorites, devil's walking stick. I also have a bunch of perennials that have decided to self-seed in the native hedgerow and I'm really excited about that. I have blue mist flower, white wood aster, a goldenrod. I don't know the type of goldenrod but there is a goldenrod blooming in there and Indian tobacco. And Indian tobacco just so that you know, know is a toxic plant. As for trees and shrubs that I have actually planted myself in the hedgerow, I have a witch hazel, two American hollies, a false indigo, a dark leaved nine bark, black chokeberry, red twig dogwood, American bladder nut, American hazelnut, and about six native roses. And the first plant that is going to go into the hedgerow today is called lead plant, and the scientific name is Amphora canescence. This is a multi stemmed plant. It has tons of tiny purple flowers on terminal spikes. It likes a sun to part sun area and it likes dry soil. I have the perfect place for it where I just took out a bunch of extra devil's walking stick. And here is the plant. There we go. You can see the leaves. The tiny next little. group of plants I'm going to put in are three dwarf fragrant sumacs. These bushes get to be about three feet tall. They will take a lot, a wide variety of environments. So this part shade area that I'm going to put them in will do just fine. This plant will attract a lot of wildlife. It attracts the birds with the berries and the flowers attract the pollinators. It's also a plant that attracts parasitic or parasitoid insects that prey upon pest insects. And in the fall, it really puts on a show with purple, yellow, orange, and red leaves. And here's one of the three dwarf fragrant sumacs. The next plant that I am putting in the hedgerow is Senna hevacarpa. This guy gets about seven feet tall. It can go in sun to part sun conditions. It likes average soil and it attracts hummingbirds and bees and butterflies. It has um, clusters of yellow to orange flowers on the top of its stem. It's also the larval host for the cloudless sulfur butterfly. And here's the plant. The next plant I'm putting in the hedgerow, um, there are three viburnum dentatum or southern arrowwood viburnums. These guys get eight to ten feet tall. You can put them sun to shade and they like a medium average soil, maybe a little bit on the moist side. As far as wildlife value goes, the berries produced on these bushes are food for the birds. The plant is a larval host for the spring azure butterflies and also it is another of those plants that attracts parasitic or parasitoid insects that will prey upon pest insects. And here is the southern arrowwood. The next plant I'm going to talk about is black chokeberry or Arona melanocarpa. The black chokeberries get to be about three to six feet tall. They can take part shade and they appreciate medium or medium to moist soil. As far as wildlife value goes, the black chokeberries are food or a food source for birds 
and also this is a really good plant for hedgerows because they create thickets. So excellent, excellent plant if you want to put in a hedgerow because it's going to create that bulk so that there are places for those birds to nest. In the spring, the black chokeberry has white flat topped flowers. In the summer, the flowers turn into black berries. And then finally in the fall, the leaves turn a beautiful shade of crimson. And just a note, I am putting in five chokeberries. I already have put in three chokeberries earlier this summer. Okay, here's one of the plants. And then just to show you specifically, you can already see this guy is starting to sucker here and here just in this pot. And the final bush that I'm going to be putting in that hedgerow is a northern spice bush or linden benzoin. I purchased this plant from my local nursery off the clearance table so it looks a little worse for wear but I'm trying to bring it back to life. The spice bush they get to be about 6 to 12 feet tall. They can take a pretty decent amount of shade. They are the larval host plant for the spicebush swallowtail and the eastern tiger swallowtail. Anyway, let me show you this guy again. Bear with me. I got him off the clearance rack and he's going to need a little TLC. I got this one for $15 and it was normally $45. And there's all the dead parts. Well, not dead, just dead leaves. Okay guys, so that covers it for the plants that I am going to be putting in my native plant wildlife hedgerow. I'm gonna go ahead and get everything planted up. After that, I will have to cage everything from the deer. So I will show you what that looks like as well. So stay tuned to see how this looks like at the end. Please excuse my Latin pronunciation. I know that I say a lot of these all sorts of wrong so I apologize for that I just finished up working in the hedgerows anyway let me turn the camera around so I can show you what it looks like now and like I say with all my projects it's gonna take a while for you to really see any difference so it probably is gonna look just the same as the video I took this morning but anyway so let me go ahead and take you on a tour of my hedgerow I took a video the other day after I completed my hedgerow project and the lighting was really messed up, so I'm gonna try this one more time this morning. I'm thinking this shadier period might be a little bit better. So I'm walking down my path, and if I turn over to the left, I have a small path that goes back to my neighbor's fence. And to the left of that, I have a dark-leaved nine bark, a cultivar, an oak tree, and two of the new black chokeberries. Moving to the right side of the hedgerow, in the back row I have the viburnum dentatum, the new viburnum dentatum. I have a witch hazel here, right there. There's the viburnum dentatum. Here is an elderberry. There's another viburnum dentatum right there. And then there's lots of Virginia creeper. And then here above me is a black cherry. And also next to those black cherries are the devil's walking stick. And then coming back a layer, I have the maple leaf viburnum. And then in cages, I have native Virginia roses, Rosa virginiana, I believe. And then coming in front, down on the lowest layer, I have Virginia creeper and some native goldenrods and also about to bloom some native asters. But behind that layer are more of the black chokeberry. This one right here, I don't know if you can see it or not and that one got nibbled by the deer before they were caged. Behind these black chokeberries are American hollies, more devil's walking stick, and elderberries. 
here's another American holly. That one's naturally occurring there. Okay, so in this space, it's a little more bare. In the far back here is one of the black chokeberries. Next to that is a wild senna, and then two more wild senna in front of that one. And then directly behind those wild senna is the spice bush that I'm trying to bring back to life. Behind that, um, there are elderberries that have been eaten up by the deer but are still living. And then backing up further, right here, this is one of the fragrant sumacs next to my American hazelnut. Then another fragrant sumac in this cage right here. And then the last fragrant sumac in this cage next to an American bladder nut. And then right here is um, a red bud that was over in the bed to the right, which you can't see in this view. And I moved it so it'd be farther away from the house and below it, I went and um, removed some either New York fern or hay scented fern from a smaller bed where it was taking over. And hopefully it'll take over here. And then just around I have more cherries and a large American holly next to that next to the wood and then this is the large tulip tree now i'm going to have someone come out and limb up this tulip tree Let's see there there and at least one more up there because i want to let as much sun as i can into this area because it is a bit shady so yeah, there you have it, the hedgerow. It'll look better in the years to come. You'll be able to see, you'll be able to see what I'm envisioning more as the years progress because all these thicketing type plants need to start growing together and it'll take a little bit of time. Okay guys, that's it for the tour. And let me just leave you with a look at the turtle heads that are in bloom. Okay, so that's it for today. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you got something out of my native plant wildlife hedgerow. If you have any information to share about hedgerows, please add it to the comments below. If this content appeals to you, please consider subscribing or sharing with your garden friends. That's it for today. Thank you for joining me and we will catch you again next time. Bye.